OK. So when looking at a proof, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do is we're going to learn two different kind of proofs to start off. The first one is an algebraic proof. All right? And the reason why we're going to use algebraic proof is to, one, just kind of go back and remind ourselves of some of our algebraic properties, but then also to kind of get used to how to write, to write a proof. So what we're going to be using for these algebraic proofs is what we call a two-column proof. So to write a two-column proof, we have to have two columns. columns. Very good. There you go. All right. So I'm going to create two different columns, and I'm going to have a heading for each column. All right? And remember, notice how this is in a conditional statement, right? If you have this, then you have that. And what we need to do is obviously, well, obviously we're given this. This is a given. That's to me true. We need to make sure we can prove that this is true, right? Because if we are able to prove that this is false, then we know the statement is going to be false. So what we have is we have um, statements and we have reasons. So do you guys remember like on your homework quiz when you set up a problem and you said, oh, they're equal to each other. And I said, just don't set up the equation. If you set up an equation, you need to tell me why, right? The reason why I did that, Brianna, is because now what I'm doing is I'm trying to train you. When you guys have a statement, we need to be able to justify that statement. All right? So the first thing, the easiest statement to justify is what you are given. So we're given this equation, right? That is our initial statement. So since it's given to us, the reason that we wrote it down is because it is given. Pretty good one, right? I like that one. OK, now going back to Algebra 1. When you guys go back and you think about your Algebra 1, you had an equation, something like this. If we had to solve for x, we have a fraction, right? And the first thing we always have to do is get rid of that fraction before we can start solving. Does anybody know what I would need to do to get rid of that 4 in the denominator? Sierra? Yeah? Multiply 32 and 4. By what? Brianna? Just multiply by 4 on both sides, right? Exactly. Um, so if I go ahead and multiply by 4 on both sides, because ladies and gentlemen, what you have is you have an 8 minus 3x. All 8 minus 3x is being divided by 4. So we want to undo that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. All right, now, when we multiply something on both sides, does anybody remember what we call that property? Please, from Algebra 1, anybody remember that property? When you multiply something on both sides, well, the distributive property, remember, would be when we had a, a number and we're multiplying within, like parentheses. Multiplication property of equality. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, those are, oh, I'm sorry. That's So therefore, we have the 4, and we have our 4. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, when we multiply on both sides, we'll just call this the multiplication property. All right? But please do not write it multiplication or multiply. Please call it the multiplication property. I'm not going to make you say multiplication property of equality, but that's exactly what it is. That multiplication property of equality states that when you multiply on one side, you have to multiply out back on your other side. All right? So now, what's nice about this is the multiplication property. Since we multiplied by this 4 from what Brianna said, those divide into 1. So now we're left with an 8 minus 3x equals 32. So that's going to be 64. It's going to be 128. Why don't we multiply what? Let me ask you this question. 4 times 3 divided by 4. What is that answer? What was the question? This. 4 times 3 divided by 4. What is that answer? It's just 3, right? The 4 and the 3 divide out, right? So really, if I had anything, if I had 3x plus 5, it doesn't matter that 4, when you multiply by 4 and divide by 4, those undo each other. So you're just always left with what's left over, right? So therefore, you can see over here, I have 
8 minus 3x is being multiplied by 4, but all of that is also being divided by 4. So those just divide into 1. All right? So that's why 4 divided by 4 just goes to 1. So you're just left with what's left over. Put on the camera, please. OK, so now, since what we did is now when I multiply by 4, I simplify this. So we call this the substitution. So now we have the substitution property. And that's just relating when we have our equations. They're sense that are set, set and they're equal to each other. We can just go ahead and now simplify uh, on their both sides. So now I'm not done yet, though, right? I guess I got some more work to be able to do. So ha, ha, ha. Josh, do you know what I would do next to go ahead and solve for this? If I had this linear equation, two-step equation, what would be my next step? Subtract 8 on both sides, right? Exactly. And we call that the subtraction property of equality. Uh, let me write it in here. So therefore, now I have 8x, 8 minus 3x minus 8 equals 128 minus 8, which we call the subtraction property. OK? Well, now I can subtract 8 minus 8. So therefore, I'm left with negative 3x equals 120. And again, since I'm simplifying that, we call that substitution. All right. Then my last one, Amber, if I have negative 3x equals 120, the last thing I need to do is do what? Divide by? divide by negative 3. So therefore, that's my last operation. So I say negative 3x divided by 3 equals 120 divided by negative 3. And we call that the division property. It's really division property of equality. Therefore, I simplify. So then x equals a negative 40. And is that what we are trying to prove? Yes. So that's our final one, substitution. OK. And then last thing that we write down, Devin, so I'm just going to write a little open box. OK. You got to have the box. All right. And. That's it. Now, 